with Mr. Sabatello and Mr. Higo. Uh, now that you've had a little bit more time since your win, um, are you as confident in the matchup as you were when we talked to you on fight night? Yeah, hundred percent. You know, Higo isn't a guy that I'm unfamiliar with, you know, growing up, I was always watching him. Um, and somebody the other day told me that he's a jujitsu guy and I almost puked. Um, I, I don't see it. I don't see how he has any threat to me. Um, this is kind of a dream come true matchup just because he thinks he is a jujitsu guy and my pressure is just going to be too much for him. Um, first off, he's got to make weight. I don't even know if he's going to make weight. Higo, you're looking a little fat. You're going to make weight or, or what's the deal? Oh, maybe he's acting like he doesn't speak English. I don't know. He's probably scared to talk to me. So he's probably acting like he's not speaking English, but yeah, I'm just going to smash him. I'm very confident in the matchup. Um, it's going to be good. I don't think this guy is very respectful to the game. I know he misses weight all the fucking time. He missed weight his last two fights, like a bitch. Um, and I really want to punish him for it. So I, I see myself getting a win in various ways, but the main thing in this fight is just to punish him and to make him bleed. Um, Again, he's very disrespectful to fighting and missing weight, and, and I'm not going to tolerate that, so I just got to punish him. So, yeah, very confident in this matchup. And I'm going to go in there June 24th at the Mohegan Sun and just smash him. For Leandro, um, obviously Danny brought it up there, the the, miss, the weight misses. Uh, are you concerned at all? Like, should, should fans be concerned? Do you feel like you figured it out where uh, we shouldn't, you know, we, you're not going to run into that issue again this time around? It doesn't care, Danny. Probably because uh, that's just about the players. Se você está preocupado, se você descobriu qual era o problema e se resolveu isso. E... Ah, quem, quem deve estar tá preocupado, quem tem que estar tá preocupado com o meu peso sou eu, né? Porque ele, não, ele tem que estar tá preocupado comigo, é, dia 24 de junho. E não, está tô, 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 tudo, tudo, tudo tranquilo e espero que, espero que esse sabatelo... No, no foco no meu jiu-jitsu, que eu não sou um atleta só de jiu-jitsu. Ele sabe isso. Não sou só ele que só tem uma, uma arma. Sou um atleta de que vai para guerra com várias bombas na mão. Eu acho que o que você deve estar preocupado com o meu peso deve ser eu. Sabatello deve estar preocupado com o que eu vou fazer para ele na cage. As far as my weight management is going, everything is, is on point. We figure out what we need to do. I'm much lower than I used to be. And about him saying I'm not a jiu-jitsu fighter, uh, he's partially right. I'm not just a jiu-jitsu fighter. I have many skills at my disposal. Uh, I bring bombs to this fight, and he's going to feel it. Uh, I can beat him everywhere in the game. Have you been impressed with what Danny's shown so far? Uh, you know, his first two fights were pretty dominant. Have you, uh, were, you, were you impressed with what you saw, or do you feel like um, it's not something that you would have, it, it's stuff that you've seen before and will be able to handle once you're in there. Você se impressionou com o que você viu dele, ele fez duas lutas no Bellator e foi bem dominante. É algo assim para se impressionar, o que você já está acostumado, que não tem nada de mais. Nada de mais, nada que eu, esteja, que eu não esteja acostumado, já treino com vários caras do wrestling, e ele está lutando só com os caras que não sabem nem fugir um quadril. Uh, nothing much. I'm training with guys better than him better wrestlers than him. And the guys, his fault, he was only able to dominate them because they don't even knew how to hip skate. So to me, it's nothing. Thanks, guys. Yeah. I'll right, take the next one from Jay. Hey, thanks very much. And Danny, you, uh, you joined Twitter recently, and I believe your first very first tweet was Leandro Higo sucks. And I'm wondering if you can elaborate on that. Was that more of the weight misses or are there deficiencies in his game that you found that you attribute that comment to? Yeah, everything. Um, I just think he sucks um, as a person and I think he sucks in the cage. You know, I don't think he's very good. He gets lucky with some of his wins. I've seen him against Ricky Bandeja, Sean Bunch, Darian Caldwell. Um, he got lucky against Sean Bunch with his uh, little bullshit guillotine. Um, and yeah, I, I just don't think he's very good. I know he's been chirping at me a little bit um, and I'm going to make him pay for that. But yeah, I've been thinking this guy sucks for a while. I've been wanting to fight him pretty much for a few years now. It's uh, a, once again, a dream come true matchup just because I've always wanted to fight him. You know, when people disrespect the sport and miss weight or take steroids and get caught, it's very disrespectful to me. And I take that very seriously. So whenever that happens, I want to fight the guy and punish him and and I got to do that, you know, with the weight misses is, of course, I think he sucks because of that. But man, I'm just talking about his skill level. Not only does he suck, he's a huge pussy also. 
Um, I don't think he's very uh, tough mentally. You know, obviously, if you're missing weight, that there's something, there's a screw loose in your brain. You know, that should never happen. I've made weight my whole life. I've been wrestling since I was five years old. Never in my life has have I ever missed weight. So he's obviously not a man. He misses weight too often, and I want to punish him for it. Um, and then again, the skill set, you know, on the feet, he's not very good. He has no hands. And then on the ground, I don't think he's very good either. You know, he threatens with some bullshit jujitsu stuff, but I don't think it's going to be very much of a threat for me. Um, and again, I just want to split his face open. I want to punish him. I want to make him remember our fight always. Um, and this one specifically is just a little bit different because I don't think I've ever fought a guy that I felt was really disrespectful to the fight game. Um, so I think this one's going to be pretty exciting. Um, I want to get him dog tired and I want to punish him. You know, this isn't a fight again where I want to just go out there and finish him. I want to torture him first and then finish him. I see it a fourth round TKO. But uh, before that, I want to fucking punish him in his little stupid ass fucking face. You know, we're lucky this is virtual right now because if this was in person, I'd slap the fuck out of his face. So it's probably good that this isn't fucking in person. Thanks, Danny. And for Leandro, when you hear this kind of talk, I mean, this isn't the first time Danny's had a few uh, strong comments about an opponent, but do you take this personally or do you see this as just part of the promotion, part of the fight game? Ele, ele, ele fala uma merda e se contradiz com a mesma merda que ele fala, esse otário. Porque ele disse que queria lutar comigo, que me acha bom e disse na virtu... é, o pessoal falou lá na entrevista que eu era um merda. Como é que eu sou um merda se ele queria lutar comigo? E questão do peso, eu vou bater o peso sim, cara. E vou bater o peso muito bem, melhor, bem melhor do que você. E vou bater em você como nunca ninguém bateu em você. E essa questão de você dizer que vai rasgar minha cara, como é que você vai rasgar minha cara se você não tem punch, cara? Você passa 25 minutos em cima de um cara e, e você sai cortado. Para, deixa de falar besteira aí, cara. Você fala muita merda. Seu otário. Eu não sou de respeitoso ao esporte. Você que está desrespeitando o esporte, você não sabe o que é o esporte. Você, você chegou aqui agora. Eu vou, acabar, eu vou acabar com você, seu otário. It's funny how he uh, say something and then he changed it. First, he said he was looking at my fight for a long time and saying that I was a, a great fighter and he wanted to fight me. And then he goes on, on his little bitchy rant and says that I suck and my skills suck. Uh, how is he gonna torture me or slice me open if he has pillow punches? He doesn't hurt anyone in his fights. He just lays on top of them. He goes there 25 minutes, 50 minutes, whatever and the guys leave the same way they got in. He's the one that ends up leaving hurt. So I do, I'm the one that has power. I'm the one that can hurt somebody here. And I'm gonna do that to him. I'm gonna beat him up like he was never beaten up before in his entire career. And as far as disrespecting the sport, he doesn't know shit of what he's talking about. He's the one disrespecting the sport. He doesn't have a martial arts attitude. He's only talking trash and he just got here. He has no idea what this level is and I'm going to show it to him. Yeah, I never said he was great. Translator, ask him how. He said that he's going to beat me. He poses no threat to me. Ask him how. How the fuck is he going to beat me? Você não tem o que ele saber. Você vai apanhar só isso, cara. Você vai fazer o que comigo? Vai se jogar nas minhas pernas, no meu joelho? O joelho está aqui afiado para pegar você. Acabar com essa sua cara, essa sua voz insuportável, seu Otávio. You don't need to know the details now. You just need to know that I'm going to beat you up. What are you going to do? Shoot on my legs? My knee is here waiting for you. Come and get it. Or I'm going to do so many terrible things to you and you know on fight time. I have a big surprise for you. And just wait for it, you piece of shit. The knee's waiting for me. Thanks for telling me your game plan, dumbass. All right, appreciate the time, guys. Você acabou de dizer o seu plano, seu idiota. Você fala que você acha que eu tenho só esse plano? Não sou você, cara. Só um plano, um jogo de plano. You saw one the plan. They just arrest you, motherfucker. You think I only have one thing for you? I have many things for you. That's just the trust that I have for you coming. So come and find out. Okay. Okay. Hi, Danny. Uh Chris from MMA Islands, uh, we've seen you dominate opponents over the course of 15 minutes multiple times. How excited are you to go five rounds for the first time in Bellator, where you have 25 minutes to torture your opponents? 
and do everything that you said that you were going to do. Yeah, fucking pumped. I'm very fortunate that this one is five rounds. That's kind of my fighting style is to keep the pace high and to go as long as possible. Um, not only do I think I have the best gas tank in Bellator's 135 division, I think I have the best gas tank in fighting. Um, so it just really favors me. You know, I think this is a guy that cuts a lot of weight um, and he's going to feel the wrath of it too. You know, sometimes in a three round fight, you can just finish the fight and be having your lungs under you. Um, but with 25 minutes, man, there's no running away from that gas tank. Um, it's going to be great because once I get him tired, that's when the cuts and the slices are going to be open. You know, that first round, I, I think I could finish him in the first round, but again, I do want to torture him. You know, I want to give the fans a good show. I want to show them very high level fighting. And that's what I bring to the table. You know, something with my fights is I show that I'm just so much more better than these guys. I just straight dominate them. You know, I don't just get a lucky fluke submission or something like Higo does with some bullshit fucking guillotine or whatever. You know, I'm going to dominate him for all five rounds. Um, hopefully it doesn't go five rounds. I do think it's going to be, a, again, a fourth round TKO. But yeah, that fighting style of five rounds is me. You know, I was made for five rounds. If it were up to me, I, I wish it was 10 rounds so I could just play with him, take off his fucking head and play with it. But yeah, it's five fucking rounds, 25 minutes, and I just can't wait to just beat the shit out of him and slice him open. You know, going into this fight, my goal is given between 25 and 27 stitches, um, and I think I'm going to do that. Uh, what would winning the Belter title and bringing it back to the doors of ATT mean to you personally? Yeah, it would mean everything to me because you know what? ATT is everything to me. You know, that's who I established myself with. That's the number one best team in the world. Um, and that would be just great. You know, obviously the Bellator bantamweight division is the best bantamweight division out there in sports. Um, so it would just mean a lot. You know, when I do get that belt, it will be for the title. I don't care what anyone says. Sergio Pettis is a pussy. He didn't even make it into this tournament. So I will be the best Bellator bantamweight. And since I'm the best Bellator bantamweight, that would mean I'm also just the best bantamweight in general, just because you look at this division and it's so deep, such good guys compared to the other guys in the other promotions. Um, so yeah, it would mean a lot. And again, I just need three more fights. I got Higo and then whatever to line up. And then again, um, it's, it, it doesn't matter what Sergio says or anyone says about Sergio, the winner of this tournament will be the champion. Along with being the best Bellator bantamweight, do you think that would make you the best uh, Bellator trash talker as well? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you look at me and I think I'm the most electric guy in Bellator. People are going to be tuning into this fight because they either want to see me get my fucking head knocked off or they want to see me torture someone. Either way, it makes no fucking difference to me. You know, I know a lot of people are going to hate me, but a lot of people are also pussies. So it is what it is. Um, I think people are going to tune in and just watch a really good show. Shut the fuck up, Higo. No one's talking to you. Yeah, so I, I do think I'm the best trash talker, but I also think I'm just electric. Um, not only am I talking outside of the cage, but I'm talking in the cage. I'm electric in the cage. My fighting style is splitting guys open. You see blood on the canvas. Um, so I think it's just I'm an overall, all around, just good fighter to watch. All right, we'll take just one or two more here. Dylan? I appreciate you taking my call. My first question was for Danny because I was noticing there that Rafael Stotts was kind of indicating he would like to get you at some point in the tournament. Entertaining you get the ideal outcome in this one. Is that a fight you would like to see at some point? Yeah, absolutely. Mainly just because people are already talking about it and they're saying that he's got good trash talk, which he has fucking terrible trash talk. All that kid does is stutter. Um, but again, I do have to get uh, in there on June 24th and take care of business at Higo. You know, this isn't a fight that I'm taking lightly, even though he does suck. Um, but, you know, in fighting, anything can happen. People can slip on banana peels, crazier stuff have happened in the world. You know, and I got 25 minutes. And if I if I slip up for just one second, it could mean lights out. But that's not going to happen. So I will face Rafian. It's going to be probably one of the best fights in Bellator history, uh, just given the stakes and everything. Uh, it's going to be very exciting. Again, that, that guy's a guy that I don't think has very many well skills. Uh, but I know he does like to talk trash. So it's going to be fun. You know, he does talk. English, so it'll be good banter, banter back and forth than it is with this fucking clown right here. Um, but yeah, first things first, June 24th, I have to put on an electric show at the Mohegan Sun. I'm hoping to sell that bitch out. You know, if you're a fight fan, you got to go to that fucking arena. You got to feel it live because when you see me fight live, it's different than on the TV. You know, obviously, if you can't make it live, you got to watch it on TV. But if you're in that arena, it's going to be electric June 24th. 
Yeah, and just as a quick follow-up, too, because, I mean, you were talking about ATT a bit earlier, and they seem to have a strong connection with AEW there. I feel like you would be one of the more natural fits to cross over there. Is pro wrestling of any interest in the future? Yeah, right now I need to accomplish my goals in fighting. You know, I got big, big goals in fighting. I want to be the best for a while. I want to dominate these motherfuckers. I don't just like winning. I like torturing them and dominating them. Um, so I got to do what I got to do in fighting, and then who knows after that. You know, I don't like to plan too much for that. All I really care about right now is fighting. All I think about is fighting. All I train for is fighting. I don't even give a fuck about fake wrestling, any of that, nothing. Right now, my whole focus is beating the shit out of this fucking pussy right here, this little bitch. And then that's it. You know, maybe I will go into WWE or AEW or whatever it is. Um, but right now, all I'm focused on is beating the fuck out of Higo June 24th in Connecticut at the Mohegan Sun Arena. All right, we'll take our last question here from Raul, and then we'll get to uh, Musasi and Evelyn. So I just have a quick two for Danny. Number one, is it always is it draining to always take a fight so personal, or have you always been like this since your time at Purdue? Yeah, everything's always personal. I don't care if it's a thumb war. If we're playing pinball, it'll always be personal. Someone's trying to beat me. Fuck that. That's not going to happen, and I'll do whatever I can in my power to win. But you know what? We're in fighting, man. So this guy's trying to take out my lights. You know, we're on fucking TV in front of my friends, family, teammates, coaches. I'm not going to let that happen. It's very fucking personal, especially with this one with Higo, because he's been talking some shit. Um, and again, it's a guy that misses weight all the time, which is very disrespectful to fighting. Um, so it always is personal. But this one, I think, is just a little bit more personal. Um, I, I get myself jacked up. You know, I'll wake up in the middle of the night. I'll start shadow boxing, picturing Higo's face and just fucking smashing it. Um, it's hard to sit here right now and look at this guy's face, honestly, and not just go nuts. Um, but yeah, this one's personal. It always is personal though. And, uh, June 24th, I'm just going to fucking slice open his little bitch ass face. And last one, I think it's a perfect ending. In your opinion, what does the headline read after June 24th? Are you expecting to steal the show or the show or for better words, shock this world? Yeah, you know what the problem is? I, I was shocking the world on my come up, but I think a lot of people are getting intelligent with my fighting style and my fighting IQ and my ability. So I don't really know if it's going to be shocking the world. I like being the underdog. I wish I was the underdog in this fight, but it just doesn't seem like it's going that way. I think the headline is Sabatello continues to dominate while slicing open his bitch ass opponent. Um, but yeah, I, I would like to be the underdog. I don't think I am. People are being more familiar with Danny Sabatello and what I bring to the table. So I don't know if I'll be the underdog, but either way, I think the headline is Danny Sabatello dominates again.